Hello! Welcome to Board Game House, where we are playing Dungeons and Dragons tonight. Um, uh, we don't have very many announcements, uh, and we already know that Taylor's going to be pretty late, so we're not going to try and delay it. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna get started, and then when Willow gets here, Willow will get here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Wednesday, we are going probably to be playing a brand new game that was just delivered from Kickstarter. That is spooked. Uh, it is called Septima, and is about it's about a coven of witches. Um, so we're going to try that out on Wednesday. Megan is probably going to take a look at it beforehand, so she should know how, at least the basics of how to play uh, before then. So Megan will teach us how to play Septima. Um, if you aren't caught up on our Curse of Strahd campaign, fear not. Neither are we. Woo! <laughs> Well, we are. We played it. Uh, but you can catch up on our YouTube where you can watch all of the previous chapters. I think this is chapter 18? 17. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I got it in our notes. I got it in my notes. Um, so chapter, this is chapter 17. So the previous 16 chapters you can catch up on our YouTube. Um, uh, or jump in the first time. I think this is a fine time to jump in. All you need to know is that this is Barovia. This is spooky as hell. Uh, we're trying to keep it light, but also it's spooky as hell. Uh, and it's pretty dark. There's not a whole lot you can do to eliminate uh, how actually creepy uh, Curse of Strahd is. Um, so, you know, we're doing our best. We're, we're muddling through. Um, I think we're having fun. Mm -hmm. bah, 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 bah. No, check us. Check having us. an awful time. It's so bad. <laughs> check out all of our socials. Uh, check out all of our socials to keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, especially, I think I think we might be posting quite a bit, maybe this weekend, uh, because we're going to be going to Glade Springs, which is about an hour and a half from where we are, um, for the very first Glade Gaming Getaway. Um, it is a brand new board game convention. It's more like it's. It's a getaway. It's more like, like a get together yeah. to play games with people. It's a get together to play games. Um, Jared and Chris, uh, Jared from Lonely Hero Games has been on the show three times, two or three times. Uh, Jared is good people. Chris, his partner at Lonely Hero Games, who has never come on the program, is also good people. Uh, but we're going to be going up there. We are going to be hosting a murder mystery dinner at Glade Gaming Getaway. I'm pretty sure you can still get, if if you're interested, I'm pretty sure you can still get tickets and rooms. Um, but Glade Springs, I think I think Jared is putting together an incredible event. There's going to be a lot of things going on. Uh, Grant Lyons, if you know anything about Grant from TikTok or Instagram or any socials, Grant is a comedian and avid board game player. Uh, Grant is doing a comedy set on Friday night. Um, uh, charity board gamer Chris Goodlett, uh, most of you will know Chris, he has been on the show several times, is going to be hosting uh, Blood on the Clock Tower, which I'm really excited. I really hope so that we excited. get to do that. Um, as well, there's also a session of Blood on the Clock Tower that's being hosted by the boardroom, awesome. so they're going to be up there. Uh, there's haunted houses. There's escape rooms. Escape bowling. rooms. There's bolt. There's so many things to do at Glade Springs, and on top of all of the regular Glade Springs things, there's going to be board games happening. There's going to be events happening. There's going to be lightsabers there. Um, there's going to be so many things. I think Jared is looking to uh, start a annual thing that people get really excited to go to that doesn't really have anything to do with spending money or like buying new games. It's all about celebrating um, gaming and playing games and getting together with people in the hobby um, as well as highlighting West Virginia. Um, the t-shirts for Glade Gaming Getaway have uh, some of the monsters from Hungry for Humans on on the on the breast, so I'm excited to get one of those. That'll be fun. I'm so also, I'm just 
Hi, I'm everyone. so excited. Hi. Um, I'm also, uh, you, you mentioned both uh, Grant Lyons and Chris. Oh, are you? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like the toddler now. <laughs> uh, also, uh, Grant Lyons and uh, Chris, the charity board gamer, are both going to be participating in the murder mystery as well with us. Yeah, oh, cool. So that'll be a lot of fun too. Oh, oh Megan's so leading a yoga class on Saturday oh, morning. Saturday morning. <gasps> I didn't know that. Fun. I will not be going to it. I'll go. You should. <laughs> when is it? Huh? When is it? 6 a.m.? No. 8 a.m. Oh. 8 a.m. <laughs> if it was 6 a.m., girl, you're on your own. Oh, if it was 6 a.m., I would have said, you know what, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I don't know if there's drinks there, but I fucking hope so. Oh, yeah. At Glade Springs? We have a bar. Great. Perfect. <laughs> I, hold on, no, I'm, I'm not <laughs> There is a there is a bar and grill at Glade Springs, mm -hmm. but like, it's I don't know. I I'm I, I I'm getting so long Glade Springs confused. So I believe that there is an area at so Glade Springs at the actual <laughs> lobby area that does have bevies. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really good time. Um, one thing that you should be looking forward to is while we are there, I, for some reason, apparently agreed to go through the haunted house uh, and put that shit on tape. Uh, so hopefully that's something that we're going to do, and then we can post it somewhere. I just watched someone who did that, and they let them go through first because they had a ring light. Uh -huh. so oh, I just sent it to you. Did you send it? Well, I watched it today. Okay. And all I could think of was, it was at that moment that I remembered that you had said you were going to do that, and I got very excited. I'm so, so oh, I might not yes. want to go through with you if they're going to target you. But oh my gosh, I'm so excited! Haunted houses, I love haunted houses. Uh, there's multiple bars. There's Bunker Sports Bar. There is Blades Grill and Bar. Uh, sure, and, and on top of I think is like off the and on top of everything else, um. Glade Springs, in general, just as a resort location, is beautiful. It's up on top of a mountain. We're in the midst of October, and this is one of the most beautiful autumns I've ever seen yeah. in our state. The leaves are so many colors. The leaves are still on the trees, which is a miracle. Um, so going up to Glade Springs in the middle of October for a board game thing on Halloween weekend, so many things. Also, Megan and I bought right. costume stuff. Uh, we're gonna be making really cool costumes. I'm excited no. about it. We're making costumes? We spent a shit load of money at Joann's. We spent too much money at Joann's. But, do I need to bring great. costumes? Yes, bring costumes. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know this! Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! I get to be my pirate again! <laughs> oh my god, I need to go get tattoos. Silent Rave, too, at some point. There's a rave? I what? Love, With I the have, headphones? I haven't gotten to Silent Rave before. I want to do those. I love raves. They There's something crazy. so awkward about a silent rave. It's not when you're a part of it, though. You put the headphones because on. You put the headphones so on, and you are immersed into the music. And so is everybody else. It's only boring if you take your headphones off. That's actually pretty funny. I think. Yeah, I think it's. Hilarious. If you go without your headphones and everybody's just, everybody's vibing, and you're just, it's just dead silent, and everybody's. Just... I, no, there's people that sing along really badly. To I don't music. know. I'm not sold. <laughs> oh, I am. I am now even more so excited. It's been a good time. But yes, that's Glade Gaming Getaway. We're leaving on Friday. Okay. It goes through Sunday. That should be a good time. We should be posting quite a bit. Hopefully, if we don't forget. Um, uh, oh, so many TikToks. There you go. Um, anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Nope. If you missed it, Megan did her first stream at CG Streamer. I'm going to plug it anyways. Megan is a professional e-girl. Mm-hmm. What is that face? Actually, the term now is I-ladies. I-ladies. Terror. 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 Okay, I don't need to keep that on here. We are going to start. 
Uh, previously, chapter 16 of Board Game House Presents Curse of Strahd, we explored the ruins of Berez. Uh, the ruins of Berez is a small village uh, that is now very empty, that has been turned into a bog, a swamp. Uh, we learned in the pro while uh, rolling through here that it used to be a thriving village. There was a manor house, and the family that lived in the manor was targeted by Strahd, the young daughter. Um, uh, he was creeping on her the same way he was creeping on Irina and he got pretty far and when he was just about to turn her and make him his bride daddy rolled up and said fuck <laughs> you and tried to kill Strahd obviously that didn't work um, but did stop him from taking his daughter but also everyone died you know mixed bag um but to, uh, he set his manor house on fire, and it is called now the Ruins of Berez because all that stands is some of the stonework from the home, um, as well as some uh, decrepit structures. Um, what we also found a large, uh, creepy tree with um, hanging... Uh, what do you call that moss? Old man's beard? No. That hangs from like in, yeah. in, in like savannah. And yeah. Stuff. Uh, that's a uh, moss. Mm. Isn't that old man's beard? No, it's it's got a different name. It's a. Uh, I mean, that might be its name, but its its technical term is something else. Yeah, it's like green and gray moss that yeah. sort of just Spanish hangs from Spanish moss. Spanish moss. Spanish moss. Uh, it, large tree, um, sort of barren of leaves but has a lot of that Spanish moss hanging from it, has oddly um, colored flowers and vines, has a sort of um, overgrown garden, um, a gated in area with some obscure creatures, um, like a, moosh, uh, a mushroom, um, a little cow that has mushrooms growing off its back, um, that sort of emits spores. There is a... Um, dark, sort of, uh, black-skinned, leathery wings, sort of um, emaciated uh, horse, uh, Pegasus-type deal. Um, there is a large skull, uh, overturned skull in the front yard um, that uh, belongs to sort of a crazy old lady um, that was hitting so on good. Thatch, um, that was, so, you know, sort of welcoming, but also sort of crazy. <laughs> That was a trip. That was the, probably one of the best experiences of this campaign. Uh, she had apparently, <laughs> she she had made a home in this large creepy tree um, that sort of stands out from the swampiness of Ber of the ruins of Berez. Um, and after talking with her for quite a bit and then being done with her shit, um, we moved on to the actual ruins of the manor house where Eris went to the uh, ethereal plane and spoke with um, the the mayor of Berez, the father who saved his daughter and ended up killing everybody um, in the house, um, who appears to be stuck uh, within the house. Um, as Eris was talking with him, um, he sort of he, his sort of death sort of played out in front of her. His skin, uh, his sort of ghostly skin started to uh, bubble and burn away. Um, a large gash formed over his inside and his innards came out. Um, and then as he sort of died, he it got really creepy. Um, and then it started over again. So it appears that not only is he locked in place, he's also stuck in a loop. Um, no one else no saw any of this. Um, instead, what they saw was just the uh, the loop sort of happening every about 45 minutes to an hour um, while they've been standing around. Um, they are still joined by Esmeralda, who was creeping around the side of the house. I'm going to go ahead and place everybody where I kind of feel like they were. We, we all kind of congregated back here now. And we kind of made the decision. Put these... I don't remember. I just remember um, there, there being 
Where's Esmeralda? The scary scarecrow. Esmeralda's skin. in the blue. Oh, this is that. Do we want homeboy out here? Homeboy? No. Homeboy was <laughs> just doing his thing. Who? Which one is the ghost? Which one is homeboy? Oh, he just went through one of his. Right before we ended, he went through one of his okay. loops. Um, so he. Everyone saw him go through the loop, and then he faded away. Understood, understood. Okay. Um. Uh, is there anything that you all would like to do? Uh, you all just became aware that Eris went to the ethereal plane and spoke with this guy, and she sort of gave you the rundown um, about what I think we his decided, deal was. Yeah, I think we decided to send me back in there to try to get answers, but we didn't. I don't think we did. No, I think we did, because when we got off, I asked you guys to think of questions because we were going to talk about what questions I need to ask or else I'm going to ask the same exact questions I asked last time. And it would just be a loop, not only of his death, but of um, my stressed state. We learned that Rictavio is Van Richten. That was a fun we little, did. Yeah. little uh, we tidbit did. We did. that we learned. Um, I have not learned to not write random shit in my notes. Good. Um, but did the Rays River we we we've got the orange lights that were deeper deeper into the oh, forest. We did we see that. We did see that. Um, that you saw that were stationary. We did because <laughs> we're not perceptive. <laughs> no, well you were asleep. I was awake. But I was not presented. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> oh, orange that's right, that's right, that's right. light, the orange light that he saw in the middle of the night exactly. is, yeah, it was a lantern hanging um, on the treehouse. Got it. Yeah. I don't think you specified that last time. You did not specify that last time. I apologize. I thought that I made that clear. It was a lantern hanging on the, near the front of the... Uh, no, he did, because that, we headed that way. That's why we headed this way, and towards the light, and that's where we saw it. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. <laughs> Um, there were also blue lights in and out. I don't know what that means. Um, and then that's all I really have that helped uh, us talk. Oh, and before, uh, sorry. Uh, don't forget about Pocket Bard. We're using Pocket Bard for our ambiance and our background music. You can get it for free on the App Store and everything like that. Pocket it's Bard amazing. is fantastic. Oh, look, there's the thing. Yep. Uh, Pocket Bard is fantastic. Uh, yeah. we use it a lot. Love, love, love. Um. On stream and... I don't think we need to go back and talk to him. I don't think there's a whole lot more we're going to find out from him. I just thought we agreed. I just thought we all were like, oh, yeah. don't remember last session. Well, because I think, I think Esmeralda even agreed to that, too. But we can do whatever. I just like using it. <laughs> uh, at the end of last session, Esmeralda wasn't super present. Yeah. She uh, around the corner, right? Right. While, while you all were speaking with... Uh, the crazy lady over here. Um, Bim. Bim. Uh, yes, Baba Bim. Um, Esmeralda had gone off around the corner, uh, and as you uh, sort of as you all come around the corner, uh, when we left off, you all were walking around the corner to go find Esmeralda. Um, Esmeralda is standing in front of this window, um, just sort of looking through um, that open space. And yes, here? yes, like literally here. Yeah, she's just staring through this open space. Yes, I walk this way. I'm gonna go up to Esmeralda and ask her what she sees. What do you see with your open eyes? <laughs> uh, as you approach Esmeralda and, and ask her, uh, she's unresponsive, um, she's staring through this window. I look at her face, like, was her eyes open before? Uh, her eyes are opened, her mouth is agape, um, and as you look in her eyes, you see that they've rolled back and it's just whites. Uh, girly? Excuse me? Miss Thang! I don't know what to do. <laughs> Where's Will? <laughs> I'm like, there you are! <laughs> We're like children, we don't know what to do with 
without her. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> uh, can I do a medicine check just to see if she is... <laughs> Willow, fix it! Fix it! <laughs> of course. Today of all days. <laughs> she had to be my uh, a dirty 20. Absolutely a dirty 20. Um, <laughs> she appears to be catatonic. Um, she's not responsive. Um, she seems to be just be absent um, from this situation. As you... You don't know what caused it because you all weren't... You, were, you all weren't present. It. She is definitely looking through this broken window um, if you look through the window you don't see anything you see what what's here there's some overgrown grass uh, there's a lot of rubble and like um, just weather worn wood and some furniture uh, some walls but mostly just overturned stone walls um, and stuff like that is, is she magical um, But she seems to be breathing correct. Like she's still alive, just catatonic and not responsive. Yes, with a with a dirty twenty, she she's taking very shallow breaths, um, and she is still standing. Is she doing something similar to what uh, Eris does when she uses her little stone thing? As far as like the physical presence of what we see, left standing there. Sort of. Uh, when Eris goes into her, I mean, you really only seen her do it once. But Eris, her body seems present. With Esmeralda right now, she seems stuck. Like it seems like all of her muscles are tensed. Um, and you can and you can kind of see that there are some veins in her neck that are sort of bulging. Uh, it looked like it just looks like her entire entire body is just locked into place. Okay, I want to go up to the window right beside of her, or like behind her, or something close to her, and I'll, I'll go into the plane and see if. Because I'm thinking, my mind is like um, demonic. Uh, something is like getting on. Like maybe he's attaching himself to her in some yeah. type of way or something of that form. So I'm going to try to go to the plates and look through the window, look at her. And while she does that, I'm going to... See what's how up. many? Is there a limit on how many times you can use oh, that object? It doesn't say on the thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to go stand in front of her and just... I My she... nightmare haunting, I can do it once a day, but not go... Okay. Um... I haven't tried Nightmare Haunting. I want to actually try that. I'm going to take out... Uh, I ha Even though I don't sleep, I have a bedroll. Okay. I'm going to take that out and try to stand in front of the window and block it. Sure. To break visual with whatever she's doing. Sure. Uh, as you do that, you don't notice a change. Uh, Eris says, you go into the ethereal plane. Willow is... doing something helpful. <laughs> <laughs> she helped me with the medicine check. Sure. Uh, Eris, as you go into the ethereal plane, um, you see what you saw just a few minutes ago. Um, it is a sort of ghostly, uh, foggy mirror of the same space. Um, you can see sort of a bright ghostly outline of your friends. Um, you can see that them doing their thing. Thatch is holding up a bedroll uh, in front of Esmeralda. Uh, Gary is sort of jumping, sort of just tapping her on the cheek, Esmeralda on the cheeks. Um, and as you look at Esmeralda, you can see um, her face is her her face and her body is all the same. Um, but you can see underneath her where a shadow would be, mm -hmm. sort of just in like seven or eight different directions you can see a an inky misty shadow going in seven different directions mm. um, and you can see that the
those shadows sort of pulling up and sort of just reaching for her legs and her feet and sort of just starting to crawl up her shins. Um, and her eyes and her mouth are just a black void. And you can see, whereas the rest of your friends, as they're moving, you can see just like a, a white sort of mist or like fog just coming off of them, shimmering off of them. With her, you the more you look at her, you the more you notice that there's just so many things happening. You can see from her hands, you can see almost uh, different versions of herself trying to do something to get out of this place. You can see arms reaching out of her form to like try and grab the wall. Um, there is a version of her that's like reaching down and trying to hug Gary. There's a version of her that's trying to reach out to Willow. Um, there's a version of her that's trying to turn and run. It just seems like she, it seems like you're seeing her reaction in her head, just the different thoughts about how to get out of this situation. But her form is just Still. stuck there, being being almost infected by this black uh, uh, shadow. Uh, can I try to summon an Eldritch Blast? Try to blast the shadows away. Is that a thing? Can you cast spells in that form? I don't know. I haven't tried before. That was my plan for the session, was to go in at some point and see if I can use any of my magic. Is Hell just blast when you, what you want to try and do? Okay. Um, I want to go up, hold on, before I do that, I want to just like go up to her. Can I like, I want to try to like touch her. Sure. See if that does like Uh. As you go up and try and touch her in the ethereal form, as you start to get close to those shadows, mm -hmm. you can see some of the the black ick try and reach out to you, just like a, a, a little a little tendril trying to, to reach out for you uh, as you get closer. <laughs> If you reach no. out and try and touch her, your hand just sort of goes through her form. Okay. Um, actually, can I... I don't want to do the Elvish Blast. Can I kind of maybe do a, the green flame blade and try to see if I can chop the shadows? Sure. As you pull your sickle out and cast green flame blade, um, you watch as you, as you would typically cast it over the blade, um, you can see sort of what almost looks like like the equivalent of pixie dust as you cast your magic you can physically see it which you can't really do outside of the ethereal plane um, and as you do you watch as white flames start to come over your uh, your sickle cool which was slashes shadows like the ones that like are maybe trying to come for me sure still, see if I can uh, do anything as you there. slash at them one of those a couple of the tendrils reach up and grab your sickle and you watch as, as they grab it, the magic sort of goes off of the blade and nothing really happens. Damn. Damn. I don't want to try to do Eldritch Blast because I don't want to miss and hit her. Um, I need Willow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I need Willow. Well, right now you don't need any of us because you're I know, but... <laughs> and you all, she while you were standing there, you see Eris uh, sort of standing back, and she is sort of, her her whole form is relaxed, and you can see that her eyes have rolled back to the to the back of her head, and she also is showing white. Um, but she seems much more relaxed and calm standing there. Um, okay, I want to try to talk to... I want to I look at um, Esmeralda. I'll also say this, you can see that her sickle that usually sits on her belt is lit with green flames, sort of just sitting in her hilt, in, in, on her belt. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna try to talk to Esmeralda and just try to just be like, you need to calm down, we got you, just breathe, 
because obviously she wasn't breathing. I want to see if, if, like, I can talk to her and see if she can. Uh, roll a persuasion check. Oh Lord, have mercy. I'm good at persuasion, I think. I think. I think. Persuasion. I am. Um, 5 plus 6, 11. <laughs> Not a good roll. As you sort of stand there relatively clueless and try to plead for Esmeralda to make some form of contact, um, with an 11, uh, I mean, that's good enough. You watch a version, one of those versions of her, step out and is engulfed by the, the blackness, and one of the shadows moves away from underneath her and then follows this form as it walks up to you, and it puts its hand on your cheek, and it says in a very deep voice, Well... Oh my God. You have avoided my invitation for some time. And now I've taken your friend as a hmm appetizer. Just to see if you might Well <laughs> Oh God Hurry! <laughs> what did oh my God, I got <laughs> Oh, oh my god, appetizer. Hi, yes, hello. Never Hi. fear, the cleric is here. Hi, Ruby, we need you. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody, everybody keep calm. As, it, as her hand sort of uh, caresses your cheek, it sort of grabs your chin uh, in a really firm way, and it says, Now, be a good girl. <laughs> Stop, Derek. And bring your friends to the castle. Derek! For our dinner. Derek Edward. <laughs> and perhaps I'll return your friend to us. Derek Edward, you don't do that to me. We just had this conversation. I do as I please in my realm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take your time if you will. Okay. I'm waiting. Okay. And so is Ms. Esmeralda Davenir. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. He's, she grips a little harder on your chin and pulls it closer. Oh God. I'll see you soon. Yes. And shunts you out. Yes. And you, you all watch as Eris's body sort of just falls to the ground uh, when her consciousness returns back. Uh, catch. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Derek. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? No. Okay. Jesus Christ. That wasn't Derek, that was Strahd. Oh, God. <laughs> he knew what he was doing when he was talking to Strahd, though. I'm not trying. Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, we need to go. We need to. We need to rest. It was, um, do you know what's happened? Um, yeah, recap I, her. I need to catch her. So <laughs> I like watched maybe like the the halfway like uh, tail end of what that. I heard I heard a creepy shadow. I heard her trying to reach sure. out to creepy shadow. Uh, you all <laughs> green green blade that that creepy shadow. You all walked around the corner of the ruins here, Got it. and you found Esmeralda um, sort of stuck catatonic looking through this window. Um, all of her muscles are tensed and her eyes had rolled back to the back of her head. Uh, Thatcher done a medicine check. It seems like she is all right, just not currently present. Yeah. Um, so Eris went <coughs> into the ethereal plane and saw some bad shit happening. Right, right. And then Straw talked through. <laughs> called her a good girl and she went undone. <laughs> <laughs> we were literally just talking about the, the books I read. I just, <laughs> not okay. I just got that. 
Okay. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's probably one of the greatest clips that have ever come out of this campaign. <laughs> Ooh, I was about to say we've had some pretty good ones. We've had some pretty pretty good ones. Okay. Some pretty good ones. Um, <sighs> okay. Great. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna like. Is Esmeralda still frozen there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Weeks since it worked we um we need to go. We need to leave. We can't just leave her standing. We can no. bring her with us. We need to go. It's Strahd. He She's his appetizer, he said. His fucking appetizer. And we need to go. And I've told you guys that we need to freaking go. We're not going to Strahd. We need to go or she's gonna... Because as soon as we go, she comes with us. He's waiting and so is she. That's what he said. You weren't there. You didn't see what happened. You didn't hear what he said. We need to go now. We need to go. We He's don't gonna... need to go to Strahd right now. We if we go to Strahd, we're going to our death. We need to go ASAP. We need to go. We do not fight me on this because if we if we delay any more, who knows what he's gonna do? He's got Esmeralda. She's his appetizer. We need to go or she's going to die. Okay? I don't know what to do. We just like we turn into a horse, we throw her over your back, I don't care. We need to leave, we need to go. Can I uh right now I'm I'm not really quick. I'm not well. So Esmeralda's she, still like frozen there. Yes. Completely kind of yes. She, I can't. Okay. I can't um, get to she's her. She's still like staring, like awake. Yes. Okay. Like, is she? Is she moving at all? Like an eye twitch? Is she breathing? She. She's uh, breathing. She has very shallow breaths. Okay. Um, sure. It appears that all of her muscles are just tensed. You can see that her there are some veins in her neck that are sort of uh, swollen. Okay. Um, but she is breathing. She, she, it just looks like she has been locked in. Okay. Would I recognize this state as like magically? Okay. You Met, can... metagaming, but not metagaming. You can. Um, am I, am I looking at whole person here? Uh, you can roll an Arcana check. As you can tell, it does seem like a magical effect. It doesn't seem like anything that you've seen before. Okay. In the ethereal plane, she was kind of just standing there, and there were shadows all around her, and like going, and they're like tendrils, tentacles, kind of trying to like get her, and I saw her like m multiple tries trying like how she would escape i saw her and then when i tried to talk to her she like one of those presences i guess try came toward me and the tentacle kind of like got a hold of her and she tried to walk towards me i don't know if that does anything to you her eyes and her mouth were all black uh normally it's just it's just outlines well, it since you saw this in the ethereal plane, it seems like Strahd's possibly got some kind of hold he over does. her ethereal being, yes. her soul. Yes, and it's not, it's not pretty. And I heard his voice. Do we think this is magical? 
And I, I think I I mean over that great of a distance. I I, I green flame blade my, my little my little rapier and a tendril got a hold of it and took the magic off of it. Yeah. So and I there's I nothing think, I could well, do I, to yeah. her for her in the zero plane. Technically this could be something that is definitely magical in nature. I mean it's it's jumped into a completely other plane just to ensnare her soul. Mm -hmm. So And she, he I mean, he told me <clears> that he was waiting, and so was she. I so, could try to dispel it. I have that ability. I don't know if it's Strahd, with it being Strahd, anybody else, I feel like maybe, but with it being Strahd, I don't I mean, think, I genuinely don't is, think there's anything we could do. If it is magical, I can try to dispel it. Depending on what the, I mean, the, rig, the, the rules of the game when it comes to dispel. If it's three, if it's level three or under, if whatever like spells back here is a level three spell or under, it dispels it. If it's above it, I have to then do a roll against it to see if I can dispel it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's there's, worth a shot. Uh, but again, there, there's a chance, but the chance is slim. Yeah. I mean, it's worth a shot. If you want to try it, we can try it. But it was just terrifying. That it was, to say the least, I mean, it was just, it was, we can't just leave her here amongst spooky scarecrows. And especially uh, B B Baba Bim, I don't trust her with her body. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that came out so wrong, but you know what I mean. I don't trust her with her body. <coughs> with her body language. <laughs> the men up there don't look like a lot of glam. Blather. Uh, um, blabber. Uh, da, da, da. So I'm gonna go ahead and try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do dispel magic on it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, I mean, that's you, what will that's you, will you what read we need me to do. What dispel sure. magic Just, like, says. Hook her under so, somebody's arm, Gary. You're strong. Uh, choose you one can creature, do that. object, or magical effect within range. Any spell, third level or lower, uh, on the target ends. Uh, for each, uh, oh, that doesn't matter. So, um, for each. For each spell, fourth level or higher, I have to do a. Uh, I would have to do a, uh, a spell casting ability check, where the DC is ten plus the spell's level. So if it's a ninth level, I'd have to get at least an eighteen. Okay. So, is it three or lower? No. Okay. So you roll for it. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, headphone users. I, it just now clicked how, how much I was screaming. <laughs> sorry. Fourteen. You cast a spell magic. And you you watch as the tension that she was holding in her body sort of just drops and her body collapses. Uh, her eyes are still rolled back. Um, she just appears to be limp now. But she's still breathing. But she's still breathing. She's still breathing, yes. Alright, we need to get out of here. We have a sister to go save in another castle. Yeah. What are we doing with her? She's coming with us. And with that, I turn into... The, what? You have a sister to go save? The, the, Not really save her, but Kazmier. the guys... Casimir. Casimir. Sisters sister. in the temple in the mountains can meet us up there. Yeah. Okay. We're not gonna say the sister, but that's okay. why we're going to the castle. Sisters, dead, 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 dead. Um, Which is what I'm trying to save. Yeah. Brother, but so after that, I'm just going to turn into a horse and get down so they can put it on my back. <coughs> and anybody else who wants to climb on me, I'm deciding to get the horse. I'm gonna yeet her up there. Horse. <laughs> Come on, horse. This is a tiny horse. <laughs> it's a pony. It's a little special. <laughs> it's a pony. Everyone get, everyone get on. <laughs> I also have a moose <laughs> and a bison. <laughs> also a camel. The draft horse is a large creature, so. Uh, it, it could probably do Eris and Gary. With Esmeralda? Ooh, it could probably do Garrus or Gary. I'm strong, I can 
keep up with everybody. Okay, cool. I have the the bag of better <coughs> movement speed now. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> we. <laughs> have normal walk speed. Uh, Until I take off and. You <laughs> <laughs> where uh, where are you all headed? Mountains. We are headed. Because it's still really relatively early in the day. Because right? yeah, because we got up. Had it's probably about there. midday. Yeah. yeah. To the temple. Follow the main road south up where up toward the mountain. There is a road that leads out of Berez that looks like it follows the river. Um, but you all don't know where that road goes. You didn't come in on that road. Wait, we, we were given a map. We were. Uh, can I look at the map? <laughs> <laughs> can the map? It says, uh, follow the main road south up towards the mountain. The bridge is not in the best shape. Two or three days at a cautious pace. Temple left off... Or Left of path before the peaks is what I've got. Kay. It also says, do not leave path. I yes. have written. Do which not leave I feel path. like we left path. As soon as we find path, we won't leave it. I know you said we weren't quite exactly following things the way that they were right here. When you find it on there, <laughs> it's on the other side of the river. So we, we're, we're that's where kind of the ruins were. That is the ruins of Berez. Now put it on the other side of the river. So we're over here. So yeah. we're over here. Okay. So the road is south if we follow the river. We'll be able to reach this bridge and then head. So you can look from your current position if you look south mm-hmm. following the course of the river. Mm-hmm. It le- it's, it's leading towards <clears throat> mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's where we want to go. That's following the directions that he gave us, correct? He gave you directions from the camp. The camp. Which is back. In our direction, say two or three days at a cautious pace. He thinks, because we traveled from like over here to Argenbolstol to here. So, okay, you all are here. Yes, yes. You all came from Argenbolstol. Uh, the road leads up this way. Okay. It leads out this way. There's no road that goes, it goes that way. Right. I still okay. can't wrap my head around that. Because we're going. But where we need to go, he said, was south of the city, correct? Because we were, we, we, where, where were we at when we were talking to the guy, like the, the Shtani camp yes. that had the dark elf? Follow main road south towards the mountain. So more or less, we have to go. If we're gonna do the road, we have to go back up here and go this way, or we could just bushwhack and come down here and hit the road here. That's what I was thinking, just following the river, because that would be the shortest route. I'm telling you, you look. At, if you are looking this way, yes, it is a steep mountain. Ah, okay. So we have to go around. We have to go around. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay. So back. To the road? Do we want to try and cross the river? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. So we go back north, almost back up to Pulaki, and then hit the road from Pulaki. Okay. What do you guys think? <gasps> I, mean, that's oh, I like the texture of this. Right. <laughs> that's what we were. Okay. Originally doing was going around Bolaki. Yeah. Because we had the choice. Where are we? We <laughs> here, but yes. on the other side. Yes. Okay. And we are trying to go. <laughs> the cat. These are Christmas tree cakes. Doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. It's de- just delicious cakes. <gasps> yep. It's Christmas trees? It's October. So we are here and it's we need to go to. Main river Through woods east, through the locky, go down river, follow the main road south. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm happy. Because your birthday is Monday. Monday. This? <laughs> we try to go 
here. There ish. There ish. We're here. Because we've got to take the road from there and head south. Okay. So we and need to. So this is. We need to head north. Like north. toward. Back up to Balaki. Balaki and come back down. Away so from. when you say that there's mountains in front of us, are you saying impassable right? mountains or difficult mountains? Right. You would be free climbing almost straight up. Oof. No thanks. So why don't we just... I could do that. Yeah, Mr. Spider Climb. I don't get that shit. <laughs> Is that where we're trying to get to? Are we trying to get here? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we trying to go? You know where we're going. I don't know, but on the map. I am a visual person. Here or here? We can't. We can't use that accurately. Okay, but why don't we just go from here? Because, because that, that's there, going because almost that's straight up, up mountains. mountains. There is a mountain there, there, there that is straight up rock. So we want to try to come from the other side. That way. We need to come, and we need to follow this road. We have to follow the road. This is all so the light green uh-huh. next to Argen Volstolt is hills. It's just like rolling hills. Ah! So we could concentrate across that way if we wanted. To. Yes. Okay. So we could, yeah, cross as long as we do the work. <laughs> Unless we were prepared. I mean, do we want to take? It looks like it's multiple days to go up and around. Yeah. If we go straight across the hills, it's probably only like a day or so. But probably much more dangerous. Yeah. Because we're out in the open. I just don't see with a collapsed body to... that we're yeah. dragging with us. I just don't see why we need to go back up to the locky. Why we can't just... We can't go that way because that way is straight the, up the mountains. There is, there is this? Yeah. That's the marsh, but there's it rocks It goes in into mountains. Where oh, that green is, oh, it goes into mountains. Understood. They're, they're rocks. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm slow. Uh, Kat, I found these at Kroger. Okay, yeah, whatever. Because they're already selling Christmas shit in the middle of October. Can we just, we still can do that. Why couldn't we just go back up to Arvin Boschel? Mm-hmm. And just like, Arvin Boschel was on the way. It, it was, not but so near we it. just go around it and get back to the road. We can do that. They don't come out of the wall. They don't come out of the house. No. As far as we know, as long as we don't go in, we should be fine. We could just stay in like the the forest line too. It's just like we know that path. I'm scared for Esmeralda right now. Which is oh, why yeah. I, which is why I think we need to take the shortest route. Which is why I think we need to go back to the locking and try to go up there. Mm. Do we trust because the people in Vila- Who do we trust in Velocky? Let's, I love let's take her, a tally. I love her, but right now she is dead weight. Or we find the clan of the feather or whatever they're called. And give her Call to them. Feather. Call the feather. And give Okay, to them. the only one who knows about it is Catatonic at the moment. We just, caca! And if we caca, we might get caca! You know? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm, just think, I'm just thinking, let's take a tally of how many people we trust in Malaki. <laughs> exactly. No. I mean, so why would we drop her okay, off there? Wait, 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 wait. We, we do Maybe have Maybe the priest. People. We do have people, so we have... Uh, maybe, maybe the innkeeper. Yeah. The innkeeper. The priest. The and, priest. And to be fair, and uh, Isaac. Homeboy. Yeah. Yeah. But I would is, trust her to leave her with Isaac. Is is <laughs> is Isaac there or is he with Irene? Irina. 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 Who we don't know where the hell she's at. Because I feel like I feel like long lost siblings being reunited, especially him in his state, he wouldn't want to leave her again. Of course not. So do we know for a fact that he's there with the with with, with the orphans? No, we don't. But I can find out. So there are three people in Milwaukee that we trust. One, we don't know if they're there. He's not. I think he left. No, no, he, he left. left. He left. Yeah. He left. Oh, dilemma. Me being Anna doesn't see a reason why we need to go back to Lucky. I get the reasoning. 
Okay. What are we going to do with her? I mean, that that's what I'm scared of. I know, about. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if we take her on this dangerous thing, like this in this state, because we literally like Okay. We literally I, have like three choices. And and this is what I'm like seriously debating. Is that one we go fucking talk to Strahd. So that way we can get our plus one back. It's just dinner. Two, we drop her off somewhere safe. We think it's safe. Three, we take her with us, but we'll be slower. Yes, I just think that- But also, if we take her with us, what are we gonna do, just drop her at the, like, the entrance at to the- At the gate, the... and just leave her unguarded? Well, no, because the, 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 the Cas- I, Casimir said he wasn't gonna go in. I think, I think- I think he went going without us. He wasn't oh, going without okay, us. okay, that, maybe that's what it is. But see, like, my thing with taking <clears throat> her back to Velaki, yes, we do have a couple people we trust, but like, do we trust them enough to know what to do with her if something were to happen. I I would be okay if leave her. I need greater restoration. <laughs> I'm just saying. I I like to play. I like to play the pessimist. I mean. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Um, the, 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 now that the bones are back at the church, does it not have its... Uh, that's mm, my special. thought. Thing mm. again? I forgot we, we brought him back. That is my thought. So she would hypothetically be safe there. I mean, Strahd has not gone into I'm, Volaki. Yeah, I mean, also, taking her into that... Mm. Strahd proof place would that eliminate his well, hold that he has on her? I wouldn't say it's Strahd proof. I would say that it is, it is more vampire werewolf safe. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Also, like you said, Strahd hasn't been in Black That we know of, that of course. I mean, he's got the name of like you. dreams and as far as we know mm, he's caught he's affecting her the same way kind of. i think i think either way i want way. to at least try i mean i feel like out of the people we just listed off i feel like the priest would probably be the best option of course it's still time though mm-hmm. time that because we, it's going to take us have. it's going to take us more than a day and a half to get back to the lock no, from here it was about half a day. Half a day? Okay. So, like, the rest of our day today. The rest is about midday. But then we can also stay in Velaki overnight. We could and rest up and swap out spells or, or things to get a fit for travel. And then head back down, get supplies if we need it. Pick and up then, your, uh... I think a couple of buckets. I don't know if they're ready yet. I don't remember how long he said they were going to be. I think he said at least a few days. It's been a few days. It's been it's been, been like it's, it's been months. It's been like it's been six days. A literal year. <laughs> it has been. It's been over a year. So I I think going back to Velaki, having dropping her off at the church to have the father watch over her and <clears throat> see if there's anything that he can do. Yeah, I mean, that's probably our best option as opposed to going to try to find the cult of the feather. Anything I would like, since we're going to be sleeping anyway, I can swap around some spells and maybe try a couple things on her before we leave. Yeah. We can stay at, at our n- new home. So, have we come to a consensus then? Are we going back to the Lockheed? It's probably the best bet. Okay. Best bet, safest bet. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Okay. Fetch. Okay. I'm looking back at this and he really said, okay. fuck off to the handmaid and the butler that never showed up to the <laughs> Baron's house. <laughs> okay. Um, throwing Esmeralda on the horse. Uh, making our way back to Milwaukee. Am I going to work? 
Uh, are you following the road that goes out of Berez? Or are you going back the way that you all came in? I think we should stick to the road. Well, which way does the road out of Berez go? It, should go, it, just, it follows the river north. Right. As long as it's staying right, right alongside the river, it will follow the road. Sure. Uh, as you sort of uh, clop through the mud and the muck of the swamp, uh, you do see a handful of those scarecrows sort of just standing off to the side of the road. Um, none of them are actively attacking you. They're all just sort of sitting there dull, uh, but they do just, their heads just turn as you all go by. Uh, and one of them does go, flop his arm up. Later, bro. Uh, <laughs> and as you all sort of leave uh, Berez, it slowly gets less mucky and more uh, solid. Um, the rain that was there overnight has subsided. It is still overcast. It is still windy. Windy. Uh, as you all uh, continue up up the road um, about five minutes, um, it's no longer swampy, uh, it's more just sort of a um, rocky, overgrown path that hasn't been traveled. It, yeah, it takes about five minutes uh, before you all sort of see coming up, uh, there is a large black uh, carriage blocking the road, uh, sort of sitting, waiting there. It does not look like a Vishtani. Um, this is a, it's a large carriage, all black. It's got th- sort of those uh, gothic adornments over the top. Oh, um, on each corner, there is a large black lantern sconce um, that's sort of sitting uh, with like an orange fire burning on the inside of it. Um, and it is facing the way that you are going, and it, but it is in, it's taking up the entire road uh, ahead of you all. Rod! I want to see if he hollered. Don't back. call out to people. New. 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 Keep to ourselves unless spoken to. Always do everything. New. 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 You're messing up all of my things. I don't trust you. All our plans. I'm going to slow to a. Slow just walk. Sure. Uh, so it's not moving all. It's just. It's, it's just stopped there. Oh. And the closer you get, you can see how large it is and how ornate uh, it is all done. It's got money. I think I'm just gonna... Is it? What's the weather outside? Uh, it's overcast. It's windy. It's probably, you know, low 60s. It's chilly, but not cold. Slow. I'm I'm pouting on the back of the on the back of that well, right now. Once we get to a long sleep tea would be just fine. It, huh? Once we get within about sixty feet, I'm gonna stop. Sure. And I'm gonna kind of lower down so we can set as broad on and come back to the bridge. Mm-hmm. Still so pouting. <clears throat> Looking from here, do I see anything that's identifying on this thing? Sorry, that's identifying? Yes. Uh-huh. Like, like, what are you looking for? 
We look like for stradisms. Yeah. Are you looking for like a license plate? That's it's S T R D. Bam Daddy 63. Bam Daddy 69. That's what it is. Come on. A vanity, symbol. A vanity plate, a symbol, like anything that would <laughs> let us say. Like, Daddy 69. I, it's weird to me that you want more than a large black carriage with gothic <laughs> ornamenture. Um, but go ahead and roll the perception <laughs> check. Are you kidding? Arena has a new ride. She rolled up. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know. No, we don't. Perception? Probably yep. know she got got. I'm not talking to Strong. Uh, 18. We're Eight, fighting. 18. Oh, we're, uh, fighting. We're, we're in an argument at the moment. In the back window of the carriage. Almost, almost like a stained glass. How it's got, how the stained glass has sort of, but it there's it doesn't look like there's any glass, but it looks like there's a large iron uh, uh, crow. It's that symbol, just large in the back window. Large uh, and in yeah. charge. Yep. Uh huh. We're um. I'm just imagining we've got. I think you said like stained glass, but I'm imagining like those like. In memoriam thing. Yeah. <laughs> that takes up the entire back. back that's ex- that's exactly what this is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I. Mm, Are there Willow, pair? Willow's kind of. <laughs> is there a pair of carriage nuts on the back of this? Not that you can see. face do the same thing. We all just go, we're gonna walk away. <laughs> we're gonna walk by it. We're not gonna, mm, mm, mm. I'm mad at him. Okay. We're walking by it. You all saying this out loud? No. Yes. I this was all meta. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but this I think was this meta. was all meta. Okay. All right. <laughs> I just used my accent and then Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to lead, the, you lead the pack? around it? I'll lead the pack and I'm, I'll start walking around it. I'm going to, <laughs> what is my strength? Turn back into a horse and put it back on the back and start. As you all walk around, um, you get, I mean, it's in the way, so you're gonna have to go around it. And as you start to walk around it, um, you can see that the the wheels on this sucker, like me telling you that it's big, it this is a big this is a big boy. Like this is like an Escalade carriage. Um, The wheels on this thing are twice as big as Gary. it's got definitely truck nuts on this. <laughs> it's, it's got it's got step rails, um, and you can see that on the front there are uh, small vamp energy. There are there aren't any uh, horses pulling this thing. Um, it's just the carriage sitting here. Um, as you all walk by, uh, Eris is the first person there. Um, as you walk by, um, you hear a little jingle, uh, little tiny little tiny bells. Um, and you look over, and sitting on the front, um, probably about this big, um, there's a small, what looks like a puppet sitting on the front of this carriage, um, and he's got like a jester hat with jingle bells on, he's got like a porcelain mask, um, let's see, I have a picture. There's a picture? There's a picture. I feel like I've seen this before and I hate it. This fella is sitting on yes, the I front. Oh, no. Uh, Show it on the screen. Ew, gross. Ew. This fella is sitting on the front of the carriage, and as Eris walks by, um, Jester Chucky motherfucker. Uh, he looks, re- the head sort of slowly turns to the side, and he looks at it, he says, <laughs> Oh, hello. I'm here today to do your dinner. Oh. Ooh, would you like me to open the door for you? Shit. 
and he sort of stands up and he hops down off the side. Hello. And he How sort tall of. How is he in compared to Gary? Uh, yeah. Compared to Gary. Um, he's a little bit shorter than you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> with his with his little with his little hat, he probably is the same height. Um, and he sort of he sort of waddles back to the back. Um, and you can see that that he he's a puppet. Like he's got wooden legs with little hinges. Um, and he he hops up on the step rail and he he opens the 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 double like suicide doors on this thing. And he goes, okay, oh, you can get in now. I don't think we have a choice. I mean, snacks. Oh, we, <laughs> we don't have a choice. <laughs> Give me there's, there's a charcuterie board waiting. Okay, um. Hold on, please, just for a minute. Oh, yeah. in your own time. Okay. I don't think we have a choice. Guys, I don't know what to do. He's freaking me out. I really don't. You're just a little, tiny little guy. Um, it's just a guy. <laughs> oh, I'm just a little guy. A little guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of terrified. <laughs> 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 Hello. Okay. Uh, I don't think that the horse is gonna fit in the carriage, though. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't think we have a choice. We don't have a choice. Uh, I also don't think so. <laughs> uh, Dad. <gasps> I'm so sorry. And he hops down. My name is Piddlewick. It's very good to meet each of you. And then he hops back up. Nice to meet you too, I can help the ladies into the carriage. And he sort of puts out his little tiny wooden hand. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Very good, thank you. We don't have a choice. He, he takes Eris' hand and he starts pulling really hard into the camp. I don't think we have a choice. Remarkably strong for a little guy. <laughs> I don't think we have a choice. Let's just see what the fuck he wants. Okay! <laughs> Shoku three board. As you step inside, uh, it is it is red velvet. There is red leather. There's a table in the center. It's got a... Uh, wood, like, natural, uh, what do you call it, like, live-edged cutting board that has salamis, pepperonis, it's got jams and crackers and grapes on the vine. Uh, it's, it's so nice inside. Uh, it looks like somebody put out some potpourri. It smells nice, very ornate and lavish. That's what they make for four, really. Little takes his job very seriously. <laughs> Yes, I do. We all float down here, Georgie. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. You might not like the guy, but he's got some stuff. Well, we gotta get her. I can help. And he hops back down. Would you like her on the roof or in the luggage rack? Um. Can she, she can also her sit in the front in with me. No, I. Okay. <laughs> and he reaches down and he like he lifts her up and he hops back up into the thing and he sort of just sits her down and he like fixes her hair. He says, <gasps> "Okay, <gasps> I have a pillow." And he reaches under one of the chairs and he opens a chest and he pulls out a full <laughs> pillow and he puts it under her head. Okay. Get the wig. Good job. I changed back to thatch. So good. Sir. I absolutely do. I like him. I am also still outside with Gary, and I'm just gonna hold her hand. Guys, there's a charcuterie board. Ladies, <laughs> can I get you anything before we go? It should be a very fast trip. It's a charcuterie board. Like that. And some. It looks like some some champagne. Guys. He's got a pillow for her. <laughs> <laughs> I got 
special situation. I may be mad with him, but it's really nice in here. There's lots of, there's lots of leg room. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna... Hear Bear? We don't have a choice. Uh, I'm just gonna pump an owl's wisdom into you. <laughs> come on, come on, Gary. Is that boo? Uh, it's enhance ability. Okay. You have advantage on wisdom checks, okay? <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> That's good, because my wisdom is plus zero. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I'm just gonna pump that into you real quick, and, uh... That's what he uh, said. Come on, Gare Bear. <laughs> okay. Is everyone inside? The... Yep. Is everyone comfortable? Yeah. We'll be arriving at the castle in just under half an hour. Oh, wow. That is a quick trip. Okay. okay. Are we just gonna, like, yank Like the night bus? <laughs> it has been my pleasure to guide you into my carriage. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Enjoy your time. Thanks for the Slam! Oh, <laughs> And you all feel as he jumps back up onto the front. Uh, Is there any in carriage entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the whole thing lurches and sort of just takes off. And you can feel you can feel that the whole thing sort of leans back and then takes off. Um, oh, what thing sneaks in a cart? Ah, got it. I don't know. She took me a minute. I don't think you're. <laughs> And now we're we're on a yeah we're enjoying a cart ride. We're on the road again. I told you guys, might not be the best, but he travels in style, I guess. Still mad at him. During the half hour, there's a couple of bumps, um, but ultimately it's a very comfortable ride. Uh, like, can we see outside? Is it like are we traveling normally or are we traveling? <laughs> Why are we going Do you want to so look? Fast, uh, no? There are curtains sort of surrounding the whole thing just to give it like a ambiance, uh, but you can try and pull them away. And there, there's there are windows. Um, and you, you look outside, and you are going pretty fast. Uh, but he is taking the road. Uh, it looks like he's already somehow is on the other side of the river from where you all at. Um, and when you look out the window, you can see uh, the. Uh, the walls, the gate that you all passed through when you initially were traveling to Velaki, um, out out the window as he sort of just zooms through. Uh, and if you keep looking out the window, you can see the uh, the crossroads uh, that you all had come across um, as you all came off the mountain. And he <coughs> takes a left turn um, and starts up the winding path uh, towards. Uh, a very dark peak that's sort of surrounded by uh, thunder, thunder clouds, and that has a, just a little, little bit of lightning uh, every so often um, to the uh, castle uh, that awaits you uh, up top. Here we go. Uh, as you all pull through the opening gates and into the courtyard. Um, of Castle Ravenloft, um, you can see uh, a very, um, and as Pitowick opens the doors for you, he opens up into the courtyard um, that is very ornate and um, well done. It's a cobblestone uh, courtyard that has intricate detail built into the brick, different side stones, different colored stones, um, sort of making pattern work throughout. Um, in the center, there's a large uh, cherry blossom tree. Um, cherry blossoms are typically pink. Um, this one is a very deep red, almost a maroon, but it's sort of just, it's a very large and sort of branches out. You can see those little red petals um, sort of strewn out over the cobblestones. Uh, there are, the entire castle is surrounded by a 90 foot wall. Um, that has iron gate work um, that appears to be very sharp and gothic, um, almost that matches the carriage that you will get out of. Um, and you're looking up at a castle that is probably ten stories with parapets and different sized towers with windows that look out. Um, it is very ominous uh, to see such a 
in uh, such a such a well made structure, surrounded by incredibly dark clouds, um, and sort of a wind that picks up, and it fills you. The sight of this. Not being able to see out, um, the temperature has dropped pretty dramatically. Um, you know, based on you all have seen Castle Ravenloft from a distance, and you know that it sits pretty high up um, on its peak, but you can't see uh, any of the rest of the valley because of the walls that surround this whole structure. So all you can see is this beautiful Gothic castle that is just. In shadow of the backdrop of an incredibly dark uh, thunderstorm. It's very windy, but there is no rain, and you can see the occasional flash of lightning within the clouds. And as you all get out of the cabin, uh, get out of the carriage, uh, Piddlewick closes the doors and he gets back up and he. Uh, sort of drives it off to the left side of the castle through another gate um, and a wall that closes behind him. Um, and you all are sort of sits uh, left standing in front of large uh, iron doors uh, that lead to the entrance. Um, on either side of the doors are some of the largest braziers you all have ever seen, um, lit with uh, a fire that lights up the entire courtyard. And you are alone. Did, I can't remember whenever I went off to like Ravenloft in my ethereal plane. Did I go through? Did I see the door, or did he automatically bring me into the main? Sorry. You sort of. I just want to know if I. You if, sort of whooshed through I, all this. Okay. Um, it was very hard to make out any detail, okay. but when you, in your vision, uh, you the doors were open, okay. and you just went straight in. But these are like this is like the doors that I saw the main doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so I have a grasp. I would, during our trip, um, as we were going, because I had to look through my spells to make sure that I had it prepared, um, I'd like to cast Sending. Okay. Um, to. Oh, shoot, what's his name? Casimir, Casimir. Casimir. Um, I just wanted to send him a quick message. Um. We were on our way, <laughs> however. Almost immediately, you, you get back. Um, well, I'll wait for your message. Godspeed. Don't mention me or anything else you're trying to do. Stay on your toes. And, well, Godspeed. Hey. Good. <laughs> do.
But let's keep going. I I've got a beat. Okay. 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 You got a beat. Step up, uh, as you step up to these large doors, they are massive, easily 30 foot tall iron doors. And as you walk up there, the doors, uh, automatically one of them starts to open outward to let you in. Oh, so it, it was so a pool. Was a pool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Gary, st- stop for just a second. I'm disappointed that I don't get to break the door down and then continue. (laughs) You will walk into a space um, that probably continues for about 20 to 30 feet. Um, It's probably a 20 foot sort of ornately carved dark wood foyer. Um, There are, there is another set of double doors, probably regular 10 to 12 foot wooden doors um, in sort of a pointed arch that extends. Um, In each corner of this room, there are large pillars that end at the domed ceiling um, and sitting, stand uh, in each of the four corners is a uh, stone, what looks like a dragon with a long tail curled around it and its wings sort of um, aggressively pointed forward. Um, that are sort of all looking into this space. Do I recognize it? Do you recognize it's it? This space. Someone else here. No, you Did really you zoomed right oh, through okay. here. I went. I I didn't. Where I ended up was not the point. No. I thought it was. Copy. You. Do you think he built this, or it was here when he got here and just like just took it? It probably like took it and then like. These doors are closed in front of you. But was the one I went through straight? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. No. Let's just keep going straight. Uh, okay, remember good. The doors wow. were open when Big I went. Fancy castle, and he doesn't have a butler or somebody to come greet his guests. How rude. Well, you know. Let's just let's go. So let's go straight. As you uh, move to the next set of doors, uh, they open inward, uh, and That's as you get to them they open once again before you touch them and standing right in front of you is a tall man uh, probably 6'2", 6'3", very thin uh, in a very nice uh, like four piece suit that has a large silk ascot uh, with a pin Um, just a very nice well put together man probably looks to be the equivalent of probably uh, mid 40s, uh, maybe early 50s. Uh, he's got long, sort of mid back length, uh, straight brown hair. Um, he's got sort of a uh, tan skin with sharp features um, and long pointed ears. Uh, 
uh, he looks to you and he sort of gives a not courteous, just sort of uh, habit of like a the smallest bow you've ever seen uh, before he um, says uh, thank you all for coming we have dinner prepared in the dining hall where my master is waiting to meet you is there anything that I can do for you before I guide you to my lord? eyes with you, and it looks like he sort of gives you like a, a once-over before he turns and clicks his heels and starts walking. Um, you walk into a very large room, 40-foot um, ceilings with large marble pillars uh, that go all the way up to the top. Um, it is a white marble floor, white marble walls. Um, on the far end are two large staircases that curl up to a balcony, and this is where uh, this is where you met uh, Strahd in your in your vision. And he guides you all inside, and as you all take a step, um, the further in you get, the more braziers light up, and this whole space sort of comes to life. And scattered everywhere are statues of different creatures, of different people. There's uh, all kinds of uh, eclectic art artwork on the walls. Um, it's all just sort of placed randomly, um, just outside of the main walk paths. Um, it's it, it gives a very cluttered appearance, but it looks like this is a collection of so many different types of art pieces and decor and stuff. Like it looks like it looks like a home goods in here, um, <laughs> and it's all just sort of there. Uh, almost like a really, really cluttered museum. Um, off to your left is another sort of offset staircase that looks like it curls. Um, as you walk, you can hear your footsteps echo over the marble and throughout the house. Um, and you start, uh, you, and you can hear um, organ music playing from somewhere else, but still very present in this room, sort of echoing throughout the entire house. He walks about halfway into the room and then takes a sharp right turn um, and leads you down another hallway. The ceiling sort of uh, drips down in this hallway to about 20 feet. Um, there are no pillars here and there are, there's less artwork. There's probably a tapestry um, in this hallway. Um, at the end of the hallway you can see another sort of s much smaller, probably single person's wide staircase that sort of both curls up and down. Um, but before you can get there he stops at um, a large ornately carved, almost Nordic uh, inspired door um, where he stops um, he gives you all another slight bow uh, before he opens the door, and as he opens the door, that organ music uh, fills the space, gets much louder, and you all see a large room with uh, wood floor. Um, there are more uh, pillars in here. These are wooden carved pillars that look to have um, snakes and different wildlife um, carved into them. In the center of the room, there's a very uh, long table that's set with a, a feast. Um, there is a uh, suckled pig. There is salad. There, just all of the foods that you all could imagine being set on this table is set on this table with a um, with a dark silk uh, tablecloth draped over. Um, it is set for five. 
and at the far end of the room, one of the largest organ setups you all have ever seen with pipes that lead up from the organ's base and sort of extend to the ceiling and um, almost a sunburst effect as the, the, the organ pipes uh, extend and fill this room with music um, and sitting playing is a very wide-shouldered, strong um, figure uh, in a long black tailcoat um, with his black hair slicked back in a uh, in a low ponytail, um, very into playing his organ. Uh, and as you each step in, um, he finishes the song and he stands up and he turns and he says, "Well, that took some time and more than a little persuading, didn't it?" And he gestures to the table. And that's where we're going to take our break. Okay. Uh, ten minute break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you all for hanging out. We'll hope you stay through the break. Um, and we will have a dinner with Strahd.
Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Small nope. little fizz. It is not a. Is it not a twist? Oh, it's not a twist top. Oh, look. There's a. Hold on. I can't reach it. Can you grab that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so excited, but I'm so nervous. I put Esmeralda. Shut, 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 shut. Everybody! I just care that we both waited for the beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, as you all walk into this space, um, Strahd turns around from his organ and uh, on the table he picks up a bottle uh, and fills four glasses. Oh shit. Which DM is doing for real, for real, folks. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this. She's gonna need a, she's gonna need a big one. Oh boy. Oh, and cheese? Look and at this go. Wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Probably not real. Probably fine. It's wine <laughs> and beer. Oh no, wine and okay. beer. And then, uh, as you all walk in, he walks up to you with your goblet and uh, and hands them uh, to each of you as you sit down. Uh, and you can arrange yourself uh, however you like. His chair is at the head of the table. Okay. So, just for the record, Thatch does not drink. Steven is going to drink because this smells good and I want to. Sure. Does. <laughs> so I just, it's actually I'm just putting good. that out there that sure, sure. Thatch does not drink. I sure. will. Eris is gonna sit next to Thatch. <laughs> Eris will take it. Okay, then I'm next to Gary. <laughs> Did, are we gonna want to be on the same side? I'm going to set her in this chair here. Oh, uh, there is no chair. Uh, is there only there four, four chairs? There are four chairs. We're sitting for five, Gary. Oh, do you want to yeah. be close to him? I'll be close to him. I'm not scared of him. Then I'm going to just prop her up next to me. Okay. I can have that removed until we are done. His yes, when you hit me with the camera. I'll have that removed. And he uh, he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a little bell. Uh, and you watch as that same um, <laughs> elf gentleman uh, walks in. Um, and he walks up and he snaps his fingers. And you watch as uh, a little uh, pillow of smoke sort of forms underneath. Uh, Esmeralda's body, and he sort of hovers it uh, out of the dining hall. When we are done, no matter what happens, I will return your friend to you if that's what you wish. Is that a promise? Thank you, promise. Absolutely. Gary's going to actually <laughs> uh, he he pulls his hand it's out and he, he one finger at a time removes a glove <laughs> oh, no. and you watch as his very pale uh, and manicured nails that are to a tip reaches out and his pink as his pinky reaches you he watches his finger extends and the talon comes out and he wraps it around yours and he says promise now for a gift for the and he un and he undoes it. <laughs> Was it cold? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> By all means, go ahead and eat. This was all prepared for you. <laughs> Was it the choice? Choice? Of course. 
was it the choice? A little, a little conversion. I did allow you all to take your time. It has been several days since the invitation was sent. That much I have been able to find out for myself. So, uh, why did you want to uh, have us here for dinner? Well, it's been about two weeks since the first time we spoke, and... In person? I was just hoping to check in and see how you were finding Barovia. Is it everything that you had hoped to find it as? I didn't really have any expectations going into this. I don't, yeah, I don't think I had any expectations. No, we were kind of just... Um, here you go! It's pretty, pretty cold. It's kind of dropped here. We'd prefer a little warmer, but it's pretty cold. But, you know, it's a little dark. A little dark. So there's a lot of fog. Anything. You know, what happened to the sunshine? Like, you know, a bit, a bit pale. And use the sun. I always try to find Jerry and its people. The people are of Barovia are <coughs> fascinating, I suppose. Quite unique. Unique is an interesting word to use. What another interesting word to use. You find the people of Barovia to be strong? Yes, sir. All of the people of Barovia, even those who seem to be lacking a little bit of their humanity. Perspective. Make a wisdom saving throw. I feel like at this point, Eris just reaches over and grabs that batch of drink. <laughs> I feel like she's already finished hers. It is a very strong, very flavorful, unique taste. This is um, actually really good. It's a very aged wine. Twenty-two. Ooh, sure. Nice. Oh, by all means, go ahead and start eating. This <laughs> is for you. Uh, I'm gonna avoid the pig. <laughs> I believe pig. that you are aware that you are not the only visitors to the valley at this point. Mm-hmm. We've heard whispers. I have not had the pleasure of meeting our other guests. Mm. Mm. Why is that? Would you be willing... <laughs> Fortunately for them, and I suppose unfortunately for you, they seem to be of a stronger will. I was hoping that you all might enlighten me to who it is that we are dealing with. I don't think I know what's happening. <laughs> I think I have a little too much wine. None of this is making sense to me. There's another group here besides us? What's going on? <coughs> what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? seem to have us at a disadvantage, sir. Um, there are three other individuals in my valley. Uh, but 
how we know who's supposed to be here and who's not, where you yourself know when we arrived. The body that was removed is one of them, and you have been speaking with her, and I know for a fact that you have spoken with the other, at least one other. Well, you said there's three. That would only be two. Who's the third? The third is a wizard that has been here for some time and has eluded me for its entirety. He set a band of raiders on the home and decided to not come himself. I apologize for my outburst. Yes, we are unstable. You are correct. All of us are. Still saying that we're very unstable, so we'll see what happens with no our bit rate. No lies detected. Like Esmeralda told you all. I was all. about to Did say, she? yeah. Yeah, Esmeralda, Esmeralda told you all that. Because um. Rictavio came here. She came after Rictavio. Right. Sure, and sure, then, sure. And now there's this wizard dude. Wasn't Which you all have heard about before. Yes. But we never met him because... Because I think that that was also just prophecy thing. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Looking yeah. Because yeah. the only other wizard that I can think of is the one, the one that went to Strahd's years ago mm. as part of the adventuring party that first storm. Mm-hmm. But he didn't actually go is what Strahd is saying. He brought everyone else. He got everyone else to go and he did not come himself. Oh. Ah. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Okay. That's what Strahd just said. I wasn't listening, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, now that you bring it up, that that did key, it just went over my head. <laughs> so, I wasn't listening. Okay. Um, didn't know that that was a problem. Well, we don't know very much. We've only been here for a week. week? Some days? Some days? Two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. 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 Two weeks.
Honestly, it's half the time, I don't know what's going on. But so. you do know something that I do not, which is a rare occurrence here. And I bet that just pushes your buttons. Be nice to our host. I guess the question becomes what little knowledge do we have in the future? Well, I was hoping that we could be friends. I was hoping that you could look at me as a benevolent leader, I suppose. I have plenty to offer you. All you need to do is ask. We'll give you all the information that we have under one condition. What is that? You stay out of all of our heads and never return to them. And you return this hair back to normal. She, she, she itches it as we, as he says it. Scratch, scratch, scratch. If we're <laughs> going to be friends, you have to trust us. And we can't trust you if you're just going to be prodding around in our brains constantly. You tell me what you know about the visitors in my valley. And I am no longer in contact with you. Through either of these two. There are any of the four of us. In your minds. That sounds... Through any invasive means. Without our knowledge. Do not spy on us. Do not check in on us. Without prior consent. Trust goes both ways. Without prior consent. Are you all aware that this is a pocket plane. Slowly gathering that. And would it be news to you if I told each of you that the magic that you use in this pocket plane has a well as a source of your arcane abilities? And would it surprise you even more to know that that well As far as you can tell, he's being forthcoming. Based on the information that you've been given, otherwise he's. Uh, 
obviously, our internet is fucked, so we don't want you all to miss any of this, as it could affect the future of our game. So, we are going to pause before anything important comes up. Uh, quick rundown, we're at Castle Ravenloft, we are all sitting down for dinner, and we are aware that Strahd is in control of all the magic as a true confirmation, um, and we're looking to make a deal. Uh, we will try again in two weeks, I think. We should be able to do that. Uh, and we'll pick up from here when hopefully... Uh, when hopefully where our internet is better. So thank you all for joining us. Sorry we have to stop early. This will be up on YouTube probably tomorrow or Wednesday. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye.